Hi, my name is Suyoung Lee, a faculty member of the Graduate School of International Studies at Seoul National University. You are watching a video lecture explaining what an academic paper is and how to write one. Any academic paper should have certain components. The details may differ by the discipline and methodology the paper uses. However, all academic papers should address six components. Research questions, importance of that research question, strength of the paper compared to existing studies, methods used in the paper, results, and implications of the findings. Let me explain each component. When you write a paper, you should clearly state what question you are answering. By clearly, I mean your audience should understand what you said and be able to explain it to another person in their own language. An example would be, to what extent do the COVID-19 stimulus checks increase household consumptions? Another example would be evaluating the impact of the Clean Air Act law in South Korea on air quality. These two examples explain the policies the writers investigated in the paper, namely stimulus checks and Clean Air Act, and also the outcomes they care about, namely household consumptions in air quality. Why your research question is important. Suppose that your paper examines the impact of a local policy on people's happiness then you should convince your audience of why examining that policy is worthy of their attention and time. For example, suppose that the local policy was effective for only a few days and that got shut down because of a local protest. We can imagine that policy lasting only a few days would change nothing important in a community. And thus, you cannot expect many people to give their time and attention to what you have to say. Let's think about the earlier example of the Clean Air Act in South Korea. Some people may care about air quality and any related policies as a result. Others may not care about air quality as much and have no interest whatsoever in those policies. Your goal as a researcher is to convince the second group that it is still worth examining this Clean Air Act law. For example, you can highlight the findings from existing studies that air pollution increases mortality, harm, health conditions, lower work productivity, and induce unemployment and poverty as a result. Even if some people do not care about air quality per se, many of them will care about poverty, unemployment, and illness. Contribution Contribution to the literature simply means that what is new in your paper compared to existing studies related to your research topic. There are three ways you can establish your contribution. The first is using new data. For example, you have a research question and method that are the same as those other studies already have used. However, you can still claim novelty for your paper if you analyze a recent period while all other studies have done long time ago. You can also claim the contribution if you use a more detailed data set that has not been available to other researchers. Or, you could use a data set from a country that has not been studied before and see if the findings from the US, for example, apply to that country. The second way is using an advanced technique when you conduct your analysis. As time goes by, researchers develop new and better methods. You can help other researchers by showing to what extent using this new and better method changes the results. The third is to have a new and clever research question. If you come up with an important question that nobody has studied yet, that is certainly a contribution. The second way is usually hard for students because they do not have enough experience, knowledge, and skills. So I usually recommend students to check if they can find a new data set or can think of recent but important policies that nobody has examined yet. Methodology. Suppose that you are writing an empirical paper by statistically analyzing a data set. Then, in the methodology section, you need to answer the following questions. Who provided the data? How the data is collected? Does it cover the entire country? Does it collect the information based on survey or by verified legal documents? For empirical papers, researchers usually have to clean the data, meaning narrowing down the original data set, and then construct a sample, meaning prepare a data set they use for statistical analysis. In summary, you should explain where you got the data, how credible the data is, and how you converted this original data set to the final data set you used for your paper. Once you explain your data set, 
You then explain what statistical method you use and why this method is appropriate for you to answer your research question. Statistical methods are built upon many assumptions. It is possible that those assumptions may not match with your research setting. Your job is to find appropriate statistical models whose assumptions are in line with your research setting. Results. If you did a good job in the first four components, then this part should be pretty easy. You should simply explain what you found from applying your methodology to your data set. However, what is challenging is to provide strong evidence that your key results do not change much if you use alternative sets of assumptions in terms of empirical methods. Suppose you claim in your paper that your finding is the Clean Air Act reduced the PM2.5 level by 15%. But suppose that you found that when you include additional variables such as barometric pressure and wind speed in your regression, you found that the Clean Air Act drops this PM2.5 level by only 1%. As an ethical and honest researcher, you have to report all key results in your paper and explain which one is more appropriate to take. Likewise, if you read a paper written by somebody else, you should ask yourself, will you believe this person's finding to the point that you are confident to bet a chunk of your money or time on it? Most of you will be hesitant to do so. Rather, you will do due diligence to make sure that the claim in this paper is trustworthy. Your audience will do the same when they read your paper. Carefully check a wide range of assumptions when you produce results and make sure to find robust results and report them while you explicitly state the strength and limitations of your paper. Then your audience will have enough information to make their own decision. Implications. Next, you need to explain what your results mean to your audience society, policymakers, countries, and so on. This task should not be daunting. Suppose you did a good job explaining component number two, why your research question is important. What you need to do is to go back to that part and provide the link between your results and the aspects you claim are importantly related to your research question. Let's think about this Clean Air Act example. In the second component, you try to convince your audience that this policy is worthy of their attention because air pollution is directly related to people's health, number of hospital visits, associated monetary costs, ability to work, and productivity. So your job is to revisit each of these aspects and tell your audience that what this 1% reduction in PM2.5 implies in terms of number of hospital visits, medical costs, likelihood of people staying at work, and so on. Practical advice. I would like to conclude my lecture with some practical suggestions. Many of you may be overwhelmed by the list of things you need to do to write a paper. When I started my PhD program at Stanford, I was in a very bad position. I had zero experience in writing academic papers. I didn't even have a professor telling me the details and tips of how to write one. The journey was tough and the struggles I went through motivated me to give this video lecture to you. From my own experience as a student and experience supervising my students, I can tell you that you can write a reasonably good paper in two years of your stay at the GCIS if and only if you are proactive, carefully devise your timeline, get support from your advisor and fellow students. The opposite side of this is if you try to write a paper on your own, it is very likely that you will not be able to write on time and your product, namely your paper, will be inadequate. Do not go down to that miserable path. As I emphasized strongly in my first video, Strategy, set up a meeting with your advisor, identify the right research question for you, closely work with your advisor, and get regular feedback from him or her. Your advisor will know what papers are out there and thus help you to find the right angle that you can claim the novelty of your work. Second, you have to be proactive and vigilant to find your research area of interest. You need to read newspapers, academic papers, attend seminars, and so on, so that you can find an interesting and important recent research topic that is closely related to your interest and also your career plan. Finally, once you start writing your paper, you'll face a lot of obstacles in the process. 
that is very normal. If that happens, you have to talk to your fellow students to see if you can make any easy and obvious fix. If that is not the case, contact your advisor immediately and get suggestions from him or her instead of making your own decisions. Remember, you are not an expert in this research field and therefore you do not have enough knowledge or experience to make the right judgment calls. I have seen many students who gave up on very interesting, promising projects because they wrongly thought they were at a dead end. In conclusion, do not make this journey of writing thesis as a miserable and lonely process. Rather, work with your friends, professors, and other scholars and learn from them and learn to work with others. Thank you for your attention.